but I can't talk today. <laughs> Why can't you talk? I don't know. I keep messing up. I don't know if you don't. No? Oh, <laughs> thanks, babe. I appreciate it. That will help me do better. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is another planting day here in the big garden. Today, I am going to start working on my first round of pumpkins. Ooh, they're looking good. I do three rounds of pumpkins. I split them up by how many days it, it takes them to mature. So days to maturity. So this first round is going to be some of the larger pumpkins that take over 100 days to mature. The next planting will be 100 days. And then the final planting is everything that takes less than 100 days. So that's smaller varieties, um, you know, your Jacky Littles and different smaller <coughs> gourds and things. God bless you. We're up against the rain again here today. I feel like I say that every time I'm over here, but that's the truth. That's where we're at. Um, so I'm just going to plant until... I'm soaked or I run out of plants. All right, one tray of pumpkins is in the ground. I left one little variety here. These little babies apparently did not get, <laughs> get enough sunlight. They got crowded out. Maybe they were a couple days behind on their germination. I don't know, but they're getting to stay in the tray a few more days. I'm gonna keep moving here, get on to my second tray of pumpkins, and then we'll be moving on to another topic. got a cool 97 plants in the ground. We've got pumpkins and win some winter squash in there. Um, and now I'm moving on to kind of protecting these plants. One of the major things I deal with because I like to grow so many pumpkins and squash, winter squash, summer squash, cucumbers, anything in the cucurbit family, I deal with squash bugs. So, and cucumber beetles. So they can really, they're just a pain. They can really do a lot of damage. Um, so I, I combat them in a few different ways. Number one, I now grow trans, I now do transplants instead of direct seeding for all my pumpkins and my squash. I have found that putting a larger healthy plant in the ground um, gives them a better chance than direct seeding for me. So number one, transplanting instead of direct seeding. Number two, I do some companion planting. So nasturtium, I had one little straggler left at home that I found this morning. I'm kind of interspersing plantings of my nasturtium in with the pumpkins and the squash. And that is just in an effort to try and deter the bugs from the pumpkins, pumpkin blooms and squash blooms to the blooms of the nasturtium because they're pretty much the same color. I don't know, but something something worked. Okay, so this is just one of my 
lines of defense that hopefully helps my pumpkins, but is definitely helpful to the bees because there are bees all over these last year. And that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I learned this this year. I'm going to try it. It's an experiment. Garlic powder. So I read <laughs> that if you sprinkle garlic powder in around the plants after you plant them, that squash bugs don't squash bugs don't like that. What do I have to lose? Right? A little bit of garlic. What is this like six bucks? Who cares? So I'm gonna try that. It's quick and easy, cheap, no risk, possible high reward. Fourth thing and final thing. I use these kind of, it's kind of a ready-made low tunnel. I think it's about, I think it's 10 feet long. So obviously that's not going to cover my whole field, um, but that's okay. You know, I've got two of them. I do have some insect netting that I'm going to try, um, but I've got to get wire to make my own hoops. So that's for another day. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm going to start with the garlic. I'll try anything. I hate squash bugs so much. Oh, they're a, oh, they're just the worst. They're just the worst. So I've got my garlic powder down. It took me like five minutes to do almost a hundred plants. So that was good. So far so good on that. Uh, I got uh, my one little nasturtium plant in the ground at the end of one of my rows. I'll probably do another succession of those just so I've got kind of a spread out, spread out bloom, spread out growth um, throughout the season uh, to protect the pumpkins a little bit longer and more evenly throughout the season. One other plant that I will bring in uh, within the rows, just like the nasturtium, is dill. So it's a beneficial plant in a couple ways. For the pollinators, it's great. It gives uh, some nectar for, I believe, swallowtail butterflies. So that's beneficial in their uh, caterpillar stage. And then also it is another plant that is recommended to deter squash bugs. Obviously it's, a, it's important in the garden to produce food, um, but you also, I think it's important to make an effort to give back and make a habitat for some of the good things. You're not gonna have those good bugs if you don't give them what they need and what they want. Um, so, you know, you can't just plant <laughs> plant one little, one little flower plant and think you're gonna have you know all these good creatures coming back to your garden all all season no they're gonna come in for a meal i'm gonna say hmm, there's no hotels in the area we're moving on you know they're not they're not gonna hang around so that's that's always one of my other goals you know to have a good habitat for the good bugs and birds and hummingbirds and butterflies and all the things that you want to see in a healthy thriving habitat ecosystem that is a wrap on day one of pumpkin planting for the 2022 season um, we've got 97 plants in the ground. We've got at least two more days of planting where I've got just as many or possibly more plants. So that number will probably increase by threefold. And I have some other plants to get in the ground today, hopefully. So I'm going to get moving on that. And thanks for hanging out with us. Stay tuned for updates on our, uh, squash bug experiments throughout the season we'll see if we notice any differences uh, please hit that subscribe button if you feel so inclined and we will see you next time have a great day